Now, the conflict uh, in the Middle East uh, has only been soaring in the aftermath of Iran's sudden onslaught against uh, Israeli state uh, in the last 48 hours. Meanwhile, diplomatic efforts uh, have only been intensified as the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has urged restraint while President Joe Biden met with Iraqi Prime Minister to navigate the escalating crisis uh, in the backdrop of this ongoing war uh, in the Gaza region. Could this be the rise of another conflict in the Middle East, uh, signaling the beginning of Third World War? Take a look at this report. Tensions in the Middle East have reached a critical point after Iran launched a bold military assault against Israel using hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. This unprecedented attack comes in the wake of escalating hostilities with both nations locked in a bitter conflict since Iran's 1979 Islamic Revolution. Uh, over the weekend, as you know, Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones against Israel. This was an attack unprecedented in its scope and uh, in its scale. In its scope because it represented the first direct attack by Iran on Israel. And it's scale because, as I said, there were more than 300 munitions fired, including ballistic missiles, uh, as well as land attack cruise missiles and drones. Uh, thanks to Israeli air defenses, as well as support from other countries, including U.S. military assets, uh, virtually all of the incoming projectiles uh, were destroyed. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Iraqi Deputy Prime Minister Mohammad al Tamim have called for restraint and diplomacy in response to the crisis. Blinken reaffirmed U.S. support for Israel's defense. As President Biden underscored to Prime Minister Netanyahu, the U.S. is committed, committed to Israel's defense. Uh, and I think what this weekend demonstrated is that Israel did not have to and does not have to defend itself alone when it is the victim of an aggression, the victim of an attack. In the 36 hours since, we have been coordinating a diplomatic response to seek to prevent escalation. Uh, strength and wisdom need to be same, the same sides, the different sides of the same coin. Uh, I've been in close uh, communication with counterparts in the region and we will continue to do so in the hours and days ahead. Uh, we don't seek escalation, but we'll continue to support uh, the defense of Israel and to protect our personnel in the region. Deputy Prime Minister Tamim echoed these sentiments. Mr. Sayyid al-Wazir, we are today and the region of the Shark and the Shark will live in an extraordinary situation. It has started to show the development of our country ونأمل نهاية قريبة لهذا التصعيد أن الحكومة العراقية تحذر من مغبة التصعيد وجر المنطقة برمتها لأتون حرب واسعة تزعزع الأمن والاستقرار الإقليمي وتهدد السلم والأمن الدولي ومن هنا ندعو جميع الأطراف إلى ضبط النفس وإيقاف وتيرة التصعيد حفاظا على استقرار وأمن المنطقة واحترام قواعد العمل الدبلوماسي والاتفاقيات الدولية المنظمة لذلك ونسعى أن يكون هذا الاجتماع بداية لوضع الخطط التنفيذية المشتركة ذات الصلة بمحاور عمل هذه اللجنة الحيوية والتي ستشمل غير قطاعات الأمن والسياسة التي اعتدنا على مناقشتها سابقا لذا نركز اليوم فضلا عن ما ذكر على قطاعات الطاقة Israeli military sources reported that their defense system successfully intercepted 99% of the incoming drones and missiles All this while diplomatic efforts are underway, with President Joe Biden meeting Iraqi Prime Minister Shia al-Sudani to discuss the future of the U.S.-Iraq coalition. The situation remains fluid, with concerns over the broader impact on regional security. As diplomatic discussions intensify, the world has turned its attention toward the conflict. The EU the West and the Asia-Pacific, the global lens remains sharp on the developments in the Middle East. Will the Iran-Israel war pave a turning point to the unrest? More importantly, is this the beginning of the Third World War?
एजेंसी रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी